Welcome to my new and returning patrons, Super Drama 123, Leaf Storm, Queen Jinx, Aaron, Anna Walker, and especially Zero Returns, whom I forgot to put in the credits two years ago, so I'm making up for that now. Oh, and also I just opened up channel memberships, so you can pay a monthly fee to see all the videos a week early, you can get exclusive videos a month early, a guarantee of me reading your comments, and my personal favourite, custom emotes. It's my face. This is Pokemon Violet, hour by hour. Alright, so after I tore myself away from my Ahabesque obsession with routes and finally enter the queue for World of Warcraft over here, Nimoda shows up out of the ether and she's all... Oh, she wants a battle, huh? Yeah, I... hey, you know what? No. I've gone through a lot recently. I want to check out this new and interesting town. You're giving me the choice and as we established last episode, in Paldea, everyone gets a chance to opt out. Except me, I guess. Look, I know that but thou must choices are a proud JRPG tradition, but you get how it's kind of painting the motor as a jerk when a freaking preschooler educates me on the etiquette of this area and she just spat in that adorable little urchin's face. Look at them. Look at the cherubic face of your shame, Nimoda! Although despite all that, I do quite like having the sassy negative responses, even though real jerk rivals are sadly rare, with some of these options it's almost like you can be the jerk rival. Well, time to waterboard a crocodile again. Yes, as opposed to those lackadaisical trainers who ignore type matchups. Although, wait, now I think about it, trainers that actually think about type matchups do seem to be exceedingly rare in these places. Okay, I understand that I'm going to a Pokemon school to learn about Pokemon stuff, I get that. But this is the same problem I had with the anime with Ash, where apparently kids love the idea of Pokemon battles without learning anything about them. And yes, I know, har har, Dunning-Kruger internet politics, but I still refuse to believe, either in this world or the anime, that the majority of kids adore the national pastime without knowing the rules of the game. It's like if most Brazilian kids didn't know you couldn't touch a soccer ball with your hands, it's just weird. But anyway, this of course isn't enough to stop me enjoying a thorough early game curb stomping What? Okay then, so this is the gimmick? Just freaking spat out at us with less fanfare than showing us where the bathroom is. Terrestrializing. I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of Dynamax, but at least they actually built up to it a little, you know? There we got a big old stadium and a cheering crowd. Here it's just, hey, check this out. Okay, okay, so the introduction was somewhat underwhelming. I can still roll with it. So, so far it seems like when you terrestrialize your Pokemon, it boosts their moves of that type, kind of like an extra stab. So with the power of mystical crystal energy coursing through their adorable whittle paws, Pobby does extra nothing because infinity times zero is still zero and electricity doesn't and damage ground types. Okay, now she's just being patronizing. At least we get some revives out of it. But finally, we can go through the massive, massive door that they must just keep closed at all times, huh? They must be time consuming to open and close any time some bozo wants to come in. But whatever, we're finally at the school's town. But still, it's a really unique and vibrant location, although I do feel bad for like the 14 Pokemon types that didn't get a showing in the town center. I mean, even the choices they used are weird. I can get fire, water, lightning, grass, absolutely. They're all powerful and iconic forces of nature and they represent the starter Pokemon, Bad Pikachu. But then we have ice and fighting? Yes, because when you think elemental forces, you think earth, fire, wind, water, fist. Go planet! I fully admit this is extremely petty though. Let's get down to what's really important in the game. Haircuts. Oh no! What do you want to see first, sweet? Haircuts, gimme! Oh, okay! So after a couple of throwaway lines about how we will accept the benevolence of the crystal whether I want to or not, we're finally let off the leash and our first stop is a phone accessory place. The starter phone cases are pretty cute, but I'm nothing if not a slave to my brand, so yes, give me the purple one. Dang, but they've really got a ton of what's usually in-game items right up front there, haven't they? With this and the weird ice cream buffs before, it's like the opposite problem from what I usually have with Pokemon, front-loading the player without any explanation. I know the late game stuff is kind of price gated by how expensive they are and we'll have to see how it plays out, but I don't know if I would have appreciated it as a kid, I'm just saying. Then a couple of heal balls because I am secure in my masculinity and it's annoying to heal new catches in the early game. Then we find an ingredient store where they don't say what they're for. Aha, now in this case you can always get at least five of each because you know it's another crafting thing. So when they tell me what it does, I'm confused by the terminology and don't buy it, but when they don't tell me what it does, I buy five of each just in case. There's a really morally bankrupt lesson about video games and marketing in there somewhere, I just know it. Well, now stocked on spicy sausage, I slide on over to the next place. Look, the animation is shockingly satisfying, all right? And ugh, more food with unexplained properties, though dang, this food looks good. <gasps> Cloth a la heel? Is this the first unambiguously dead Pokemon the player is allowed to eat? 
I mean, I know it's been confirmed that people eat Pokemon since Gen 1 with Farfetch, but I'm pretty sure the player hasn't ever been given the option to eat any. Well, I mean, I guess there's Slowpoke tails, but those weren't from dead Slowpoke. Wait, dang it, lots of crabs can grow their claws back, so maybe this is sustainably sourced cloth meat, so yeah, I probably just wasted your time. Oh, well, what's new and what's next? Well, after passing this happy chappy, we continue to search the town and find more locked doors. Yep, Paldea continues to be the Detroit to the other regions Windsor, I guess, with all the doors that aren't shops just closed off to any adult friendlies. I know, I know that I couldn't go into all the buildings in Saffron or Castellia or Illumios either, but two problems there. One, there wasn't any expectation that I could, and two, you could still go into some. In this, one of the most central, touristy, and scenic urban centers in the region, we don't even get a freaking visitor center to explore? Oh, but Swade, there's tons of shops in Mesa Gosa. Yeah, yeah, well, young Swade might enter the building but Old Swade stands outside like freaking David Tennant. Well, okay, there's one exception to that, to be fair. The sandwich shop. And they're just another food vendor with bizarre unexplained perks like all the others. If you're going to dump a new mechanic on me, either explain it first or tease it. Don't smother me in marinara and tell me it'll make sense in the spaghetti meter. <sighs> Look, I do like that there's at least a special doormat that tells you which doors can be entered, though. That is a nice, subtle touch. Well, okay, let's just put these niggles behind us and go get a nice, rejuvenating, and I can't afford a haircut. Or new clothes, but I wanted a Gatsby cap with Wabash stripes. I've never been able to buy a Gatsby cap with Wabash stripes in a video game before. It's it's just not fair. Well, whatever. Let's just go into the school. Hopefully, I can actually go inside it. Hey, why are those guys gigging up on the protagonist of the latest Fire Emblem game? After choosing to help out this girl, to be honest, it would have been nice if Game Freak used they here. Not even just because it's inclusive. There's no way your character could have known that that was a girl just by looking. And guessing is just a minefield. We find out that this is the new villain team, Team Star. Burning so bright it hurts to look at them. Um, who wants to tell them about stars? Anyone? Now, if y'all were Team Sun, that would make sense, but of course that'd be too confusing. After showing up what I'm sure will be the latest TikTok dance, they send out another new Pokemon, Shrudel. And if I wasn't spoiled on their evolutionary line, I would have bet cash money that this was a pre-evolution to a Paldean Smeargle. Though, I mean, come on, that's basically what Grafaya is, let's be honest. Then after the usual trouncing, Nimona comes along and she's all, you don't have to go find Brandos to battle. You'll have all the battles you ever need with me. She may not be a jerk, but she sure is throwing up some red flags, let me tell you. And she's the council president? So she can't be in the same year as me, but she's in the same classes? Is she repeating a grade? While also being the student council- This school's weird, and so is that! What the heck? Yeah, this mystical ball that looks like what that one kid from school whose uncle works at Nintendo swore was the one above the master ball, able to catch any Pokemon of your choice from anywhere, is actually a Terra Orb. Normally this takes a full course to acquire, but Nimona's all- Yes, that good word I put in should flush through their system in about 8 to 10 hours, but they'll recover. I'd never keep anything from you, Sway Chan. Then this happens, which is hilarious. Um. Are you gonna battle or what? No, and it wasn't a glitch either, it was just a bad loading time. So I switched to La Margarita since it seemed appropriate to use my starter, and then terrestrialize the sucker. <laughs> I'm sorry, but after Mega Evolutions and even Gigantamax, this just seems like a real downgrade. Sure, the crystal is pretty, but the emblems on their heads just look really goofy to me. It looks like she snatched Zimipor's wig. Right, so then I use Water Gun, only more so. Are we sure this isn't just Z-moves again? And Power Wash the Mongoose off the pavement, which causes the background dancing to take on a very cynical air. Yeah, good job, just astounding. Shut up. Oh no, this is my abject failure dance. It's meant to cheer you up after being annihilated. Give me a reason, Karen. Then Aaliyah thanks us in a very autistic manner. Yeah, and then finally, finally, we climb up the 7,000 steps of High Hrothgar and head into the school. It took me 10 seconds. But dang, credit where it is due, this is one cool school. I love the literal walls of books taking up the entire atrium like it's a place of learning made from learning. They nailed the unique boarding school feel of posh but still cozy with a sense of pure potential and tight community that I fell in love with in Final Fantasy VIII, entered into a serious relationship before hitting a messy divorce with the Harry Potter franchise, and settled down with even though it wasn't quite the same in Trails of Cold Steel. But hey, maybe this could be my Spanish fling. Oh, and here's Clavel again, and he's all, Suede, how did you find your first school commute? And then, whoa. 
it was tough. Uh, really? I suppose Nimona led you on quite an adventure. You could say that, yeah. Yeah, so we inform him about Team Star and then head to our first non-anime glimpse into the Pokemon education system. Well, okay, there were other games that showed classrooms, but this is the first centralized look. This joke isn't working, just cut it out in the end. So our homeroom teacher is Corella Deville's burnout nephew who could stand to call once in a while, Jacques. And he's all, okay, got some news. And this kid's all, Ah, it's nice to occupy a fantasy world sometimes, isn't it? Then we get to do the whole anime introduction in front of the class, which I never got in the New Zealand system. Here it's more just- Were you here before? Nah, I arrived last week. Maybe that's just because my schools weren't that posh, but do they do that in the US and Europe? Let me know. Then they ask me what my favorite thing is about Pokemon. I guess I'll go for eclectic as I do like seeing the different designs. A more honest answer would be a more holistic one as it's the combination of different elements that appeal to me, but I like everything about Pokemon. Just sounds like a cop-out no matter how accurate it is. Then Nimona goes and asks me what I hope to get out of school? Um, an education? I guess scholastic endeavors really are optional in the Pokemon world if this is a legit question. If I was asked what I wanted to get out of school growing up, my answer would be to get out of school. But of course that's not an option either, so I'll go with completing the Pokedex, as that fits with my collection answer earlier. Then after a class so boring I guess I blacked out, we're given free reign to check out the school and even take some classes. Or not, unless cafeteria is a class and this is actually an extremely specific vocational school. Well, let's check it out. No, nope, just standard catering. Oh, hey Arvin. I do love that you can just be a kind-hearted troll in these games. Again, if they won't give me a jerk rival, I'll just have to become the jerk rival. Also, sometimes it's just a sensible option, like here. You see, Suede, I want to make my dream a reality. Happy to help. Great. Grab some honey from the kitchen and meet me in the forest. I already have the turkey baster. Luckily, it's nothing like that, although it does involve food. There's apparently a set of herbs that heal whatever ails you, and I'm going to sidestep the obvious weed joke and refer, uh, refer to them as sensu beans from now on. Yeah, as a bit of a foodie, Arvin really wants to get a hold of them, but apparently they're guarded by Titan Pokemon. What are the odds? So I guess Gigantamax isn't dead yet. Ooh, and there's a new Donphin form, neat. So he tells us where the last known locations are. Dal, that phone case is adorable. Way to embrace your inner soft boy, my dude. Then he gives me a bag of stardust and bolts. Here's to the men that come with the dust and are gone with the wind indeed. On the way out, a chef tries to offer me a sandwich, but get thee behind me, Satan. Tip me not with your three sideways wieners? What? But yeah, aside from that and this one girl who's asking that question, I feel most denizens of this world should be asking way more often. We then head out only to get hacked. Gee, I hope hacking doesn't hurt for a sentient phone. This is Cassiopeia, whom I was sure was going to be the leader of Team Star, but no, it's actually someone trying to bring them down by hacking phones without permission. Hmm. My gosh, it's Gliger, man. Bizarrely, when Clavel confronts us about it, we do not have the option to let him know, even though it's important to school safety. My phone was hacked, and Cassiopeia never said to keep it a secret, but fine. I just want to attend a class, which we can access from the main hall. Okay, let's try biology first. And wait, does he teach all the classes? No wonder he's always tired. No, he just also happens to teach biology, and I'm all about this. Finally, we get to hear some deep lore about Pokemon physiology. Will we finally find out where the eggs come from? No, we just learn where it's impolite to let your Pokemon out. You think that would more likely be part of Home X curriculum, but but oh, class is over. <sighs> that was disappointing. Next is maths. Sorry, in New Zealand at least, it's maths because it's short for mathematics, not mathematic. Even when you in the US make cute portmanteaus, you still make it plural, like mathletics. Not mathletic. Yeah, sorry, I always found that weird. So how do they tie maths to Pokemon, you ask? They actually tie it accurately into the game mechanics like type matchups, helping kids understand how useful maths can be even if you don't find the theory engaging. That was actually really well executed, Game Freak. I'm impressed. That's super effective. So we've got one hit and one miss. Now how do we handle battle theory? Probably the one subject everyone was expecting. Well, the teacher's certainly fun, but it also goes into some of the more overlooked aspects of battling in a really accessible way, which is also good. Took me way too long in the early gens to realize special defense doesn't affect physical attacks. Give me a break, I was 12. So something like this would have been great. So two out of three, not bad. I'd check out the second lessons, but I want to fully explore the place first, so let's really see what we can find on these bookshelves. Fingers crossed it's a new vaguely disturbing revelation about what happened in the distant past. Well, first book is about how terror types work, including the important tidbit that if a Pokemon has a different type to their terror type, terrestrializing boosts said other type moves and the moves of their original type. So if you've got a dual type Pokemon with a new terror type, it's almost like having three types. Fascinating. Well, already we're learning new stuff. What else is there? Ah, yep, teaching about stab. That's another good one for new players to know. The Uva Academy school song? Hook me up! Over Grand Mezzagosa stands our dear Yuva, where we enter as seeds and leave in fruition, our minds wide as the crater, for wise educators, to fill with individual spirit and future ambition. 
Teach us well, O oh, grapes of Paldea. Boy, they really screwed the meter on the second to last line there, and I can't believe they didn't rhyme fruition with tuition. Though that line that evokes seeds, leaves, and fruit in the same sentence was brilliant. Overall, a C minus. See me after class. Then the next book. Oh, that's how big Venonat is. That's horrific. The next book is about nature. It's my least favorite mechanic in the whole dang game, just because it means if you want to be competitive, you can't just use it in a fun way to characterize your Pokemon. It's just a signifier of a hereditary stat boost that you have to engage in sanitized eugenics to acquire. Ugh. But what's next? Ah, the regulations. This should be good. What are the ironclad rules of this school? Cut your hair how you want. Don't be a jerk. Stay away from the crater of doom. We then put down the ironclad rules of the school and pick up the school registry which has the last few pages torn out. What the heck? That's a criminal offense. The next book is called A Culture, which has already scored bonus points for that portmanteau and giving me another excuse to use the word portmanteau. It's kind of a fake science monthly. This one about a kind of robot high dragon called Iron Jugulus. <laughs> Sounds like one heck of a cocktail. Next is the music register talking about DJ Rhyme, who was a cool sounding ghost type rapper, a ghost type killer, if you will. Wait a minute. Rhyme, I've heard that before. But also apparently her puppy Pokemon turned into a ghost Pokemon when it died? Does that mean all ghost Pokemon are previously dead Pokemon? But then how come they can breed to make more ghost Pokemon? Okay, I have some serious questions for Jacques come next biology class. And there's a cooking magazine praising a cafe called Soapberry, which is kind of unappetizing in my opinion. It's like Hydrox, the chocolate biscuit that predated Oreos. If you sound like a cleaning product, you lose yummy points, at least for me. Next is Paldean Sports Monthly, and let me guess, it's about Pokemon battles. No snowboarding. I thought there were no other sports in Pokemon aside from surfing. Well, I guess snowboarding is kind of surfing on a different state of water, so that tracks. Then it's another a culture, this time about a metal donphin named Iron Treads. I just want to see this violet book they keep talking about. Then there's a story about Sharkaday. No wait, Charkadet, yeah. A fire child Pokemon who has to choose between two sets of armor. I'm guessing that's a pseudo legendary I'll meet later. Then a record of Hall of Fame badges that have been awarded and man, they must have had a really bad year last year. Maybe that's when the Volcarona virus happened. Then another a culture, this time talking about a metal Volcarona. Hey, I was just talking about you. Then there's of people and Pokemon. Oh yeah, here's the juicy stuff. Uh, oh, it's just a reference to Legends Arceus. Well, shoot, I was going to go to my next class, but I got sucked into the library. This really is like my own school experience. Well, it's time for our question of the week. Who's that Patreon? It's, it's Evan Bow. They ask, how much do you know about Pokemon characters in the anime series that you haven't watched? Well, not much considering I haven't watched it. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. How much have I learned in my research? Aside from all that I covered in Pokemon Journey and because I wanted to go into that as fresh as possible, literally the only things I know about the other characters are that May doesn't like Pokemon at first, Max is a nerd, Brock comes back, Dawn is May Mark II, Paul is basically a power gamer that got isekai into Pokemon and that's why he's just the worst, at least at first, Pikachu fought Latios to a standstill and then Darkrai out of nowhere, Iris won't stop calling Ash a kid, How Dare Silence instead where Brock once stood, Trip is basic, Serena is the closest shippers get to a payoff, I know nothing about the other XY companions, Ash gets a Greninja which looks like him and their fight scenes are amazing, Lily is nice even if her voice was very miscast, Lana is best girl, Sophocles is Max Mark II, Kiawe has big shirtless energy, someone gets married and has a child around Ash meaning he's definitely not aging, and Go seemed like he was being groomed to take over from Ash. I know a little more than that but that's about it really. I'm hoping to rectify that soon enough as I've been offering commentaries on the early Diamond and Pearl episodes on Patreon. Why did I skip to Diamond and Pearl? Because it's all I can get hold of right now. Present, present Pokemon TV. So we finally made it to the school. Good grief, this was one full hour. But I'm still loving the setup so far, the lack of indoor locations notwithstanding. I love the scholastic atmosphere and we'll have to see if more dreams and adventures and hair tearing academic anxiety are still to come. See you then and remember to learn from your grapes. Oh, and shout out to Mario Fanboy 15, Avon Cornish, Black Devil 1942, Brendan Kay, Calvin Atkinson, Gimbo, John G. Robinson, Jonathan Johnson, Matt Storrs, Matthew Butcher, Maurice Spear, Mystic Samurai 1983, Trey McGowan, Winters King, and Wolf Raptor for their high tier contributions to the channel. Thanks. <laughs>